So I wanted to do a little review on the Boom King class. Um, as people can probably tell by a lot of my videos, I'm really not happy with the uh, Legion beta right now. I see a lot of inconsistencies. I feel that uh, we're being ripped off. I mean, uh, they dropped Overwatch, so that's a PvP game. So what are, what are we dealing with right now? So let's start right here with balance. Um, the um, the new abilities, uh, Lunar Strike. Um, let's just start right here. Lunar Strike, if, if, if you come down to the bar, it generates astral power. If you go to Moonfire, it generates astral power. If you go to Solar Wrath, it generates astral power. And if you go to Sunfire, it generates astral power. That's a new thing you're going to be focusing on to proc your, uh, your star shards um, and such of that nature. Um, if you notice, right here, it does not say... It, I'm sorry, it does say generates astral power. If you notice here, it says generates astral power. If you come over here, it does not mention generating astral power. If you come here, it does not mention generating astral power. All um, star shards, well, yeah, that one's, that's going to be one that you're going to use. Uh, star surge and starfall are going to be the ones you're going to use um, with your astral power. But um, right there, I mean, you see inconsistencies. So they couldn't even write it into the text to give you the full description, which means we're half-assing things. Okay, so let's move on. These are the talents that I've gone ahead, uh, gone with, um, and I'll try to explain my reason being. Um, lunar and solar empowerments are going to come off of your uh, your star search. Um, ultimately, what I'm finding is is that. You know, the empowerments aren't long enough to try to be proccing damage because a lot of your stuff is castables. Um, I find that giving the two Lunar Strikes uh, as an instant cast work great. Um, reason being, um, I'm focusing on trying to burst from three different areas. Um, one being using the Warrior of Loon, uh, to proc my Lunar Strike. Uh, number two being the new moon. Uh, this is a new ability that transfers to a half moon, dealing more damage, and then goes to a full moon to do even more damage. Um, I find that that's a fantastic ability. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, and if used with um, an ability Astral Communication, which generates power, which is on a 1.3 minute cooldown. So pretty frequently you can bang up your Astral Power to proc some of instant star surges. So now we're talking about instant lunar strikes, we're talking about instant star surges, and we're talking about uh, this uh, this moon rotation that you can use because it has three charges. Um, and as you go ahead and use it, um, it comes up about once every 30 minutes, er, every minute and 30 or so. Um, Displace your beast, it's a great note. Let's go back to the first. Force of Nature, it's only doing taunting, so as far as the damage and stuff coming off, it's not really valid. The uh, the two Lunar Strikes are going to provide you with 100k DPS just right off of those strikes. Um, right there. Lunar Strikes uh, causing 7, 7, 72,407 damage to the target and 13,000 to all targets within 5 yards, which then, if we're talking about 5 yards, I mean Lunar Strikes hitting additional targets and Maybe if you're striking, using a lunar strike on a target who is now charging you with three other targets, then you'll hit something within five yards. I mean, five yards is very close. Um, if they had increased it to eight yards or ten yards, potentially you might really be clipping some targets at range, but you're not really going to be tar clipping any targets at range, so you have to just really look at it as what it is. Um, Displacer Beast is a great out. It teleports you. Uh, we've been using it as far as renewal. You know, I honestly feel, you know, let's talk about racials. Um, for the Druid, I mean, it's really Night Elf and Torrin. Um, I don't see it any other way. Um, the outs, as far as Shadow Mode, is, is a great out. Um, War Stomp is also a great out. Um, I understand, you know, you can get stuff to maximize your damage a little bit more with other classes, but... Uh, Survivability is everything. If you're not looking at it that way from a PvP standpoint, then I feel you're wrong. I mean, 
I've spent time in other videos talking about the difference between uh, duels and arenas versus uh, rated battlegrounds and battlegrounds. Um, and I mean, I truly feel that Blizzard's stance right now is to help out the people in arenas. People are glass cannons right now. Everyone. I mean, all across the board. Um, so, with that said, um, you need little tricks and stuff. Uh, wild Charge. Alright, so, grants movement ability that varies based on your form. So, uh, non shape shifted fly to an ally's position. Uh, charge an enemy immobilizing them for four seconds. Um, this is on a 15 second cooldown, so you're, you're stunning all the time. Uh, leap behind an enemy dazing the cat one for three seconds. Uh, that's great. And one can bound backwards. Um, as far as bound backwards being uh, used for one can, I don't look at that as really viable. Um, reasons being is because you've got a lot of quick classes right now, you know, between demon hunters and warriors charging, and even your death knights have speed abilities, and I mean, we've pretty much looked at a lot of, um, We've looked at a lot of speed um, abilities on cloaks and enchants and stuff. I, I, I don't see this being great uh, versus uh, the Displacer Beast. The Displacer Beast is really a great out. Um, to further it, let's jump into the uh, Honor Tree really quick and discuss um, Shape Mender. Each time you activate a Shape Shift form, you're healed for 5% of your maximum health. So 5% of your maximum health by doing the uh, Displacer Beast out beast out is is great. Um, if you look at other abilities in this that you'd have to choose between, it's like using healing touch on an ally always critical hits and reduces the cast on healing touch. Yeah, I don't really care about healing touch. And um, Druid of the Claw, while in bear form your chance to critically hit is reduced um, by an additional 10%. Um, so you're not in bear form. Um, the reason you're not is because Moonkin form is providing you with more armor than bear form right now, so bear form's not your out as far as Vulcan's concerned. Uh, I mean, you can go into uh, Mighty Bash. Uh, this one was here before, invokes the spirit of Ursoc to stun the target for five seconds. Um, like I said, jumping into bear form, you're lowering your armor, so it's it's a no brainer as far as I'm concerned. You don't want Mighty Bash, um, and then you have to choose between stuff like Typhoon and Mass Entanglement. Uh, Typhoon. You typhoon someone, yeah, you might be knocking someone off somewhere, but we know that typhoon knockback is not incredible. Um, number two, it can be charged out of, um, so stuff like that makes it just not as viable for me. Uh, mass entanglement is incredible, uh, especially, you know, when you're using war stop and displace your beast and mass entanglement. Now, there's another interesting ability coming over to the book, Kent's, uh, I hope I'm not confusing, it's prickling thorns. So when you use Entangling Roots, it's removed if spells or ends, the target will take 119,000 damage, which means that Roots are incredibly viable. Um, I don't see this proccing off the Mass Entanglement, unfortunately, which would have been incredible, but um, using your Roots is viable DPS now, so slowing people down that way is great. So now you're like, oh, I got a new option, an option that we've really never had before because it never gave that type of damage. Um, but I find myself rooting targets all the time because just casting it out there, I know I'm doing 120,000 DPS to that target. So that's why I made some of the decisions I made as far as the Displacer Beast. Um, you kind of see that multiple ta talents from multiple trees kind of affect each other. Um, I like what the Druids did as far as uh, these trees. Um, if you look, the, the Feral Infinity um, is offering capitalism. Abilities. Um, that's great because you don't want too many abilities on one class. You don't want them having an incredible amount of stuff to choose between. But uh, you also want something that works. Um, so Restoration Infinity seemed great um, because the other one I was talking about was going into Calf Form, which I really don't see that as being viable. Um, the Swift Men really isn't that great, but we know Rejuve and Regrowth. Um, the dot on regrowth is incredibly viable. You use that with Swift Mend. I feel that that's your uh, 
that's that's a great out. You know, as far as if you're casting, if you have a little downtime, that's what you want to try to fill in with. Um, so the Stellar Flare. Um, damage over time, over 24 seconds? Um, no. Uh, that's, a, that's a raid ability. I mean, you can use it to get nice ticks. Uh, I'm sure um, people figured out a way to use this in the rotation. Um, but I, I don't really like it. Soul of the Forest increases damage bonus from normal and solar empowerments. Once again, the empowerments aren't up all the time. I'm looking for some consistent damage or some really nice bursts that I can time in properly. Um, and the back on that is reduces the cost on Starfall. Now, I don't see Starfall. Like, there is a lot of stuff in the town tree to boost the ability of Starfall. So if you want to walk around and be like a marksman on because Marksman on her is uh, damage. It's like 95% barrage. If that's what you want to do, then you can try to increase all your Starfall abilities. But you have to think about what that does for your team in PvP. Are you really killing any specific target? No, you're not. Um, which means that you're doing damage and you're increasing yourself on the meters, but you're not really doing anything. Um, I chose Incarnation, uh, Chosen of Balloon. Uh, increases your damage on all spells by 40%. And causes your lunar strike and solar wrath to generate 50% additional astral power, which means additional star surges, which means, um, which means additional star surge. Uh, astral communication completely viable. Uh, let's compare some stuff in the trees. Uh, shooting stars, moon fire and sun fire damage over time has 10% chance to call down a falling star dealing 9,000 damage. When you're looking at a 1.4 million dollar, 1.4 mil um, health bar, 9,000 is not anything, and we don't care about it, nor do we care about the 5 astral power, because like I said, if you proc it properly, you keep your astral power up, that's not doing it. Um, Blessing of the Ancients seems nice, um, I've used it a little bit, it seems to rotate from, you know, when you're in and out of combat. Um, I find that the 75 Astro Power is just is just great. Um, like I said, 1.33 minute cooldown. Um, if you think about that as terms as how a battle plays out, I mean, most combat battles are going into what, are about 45 seconds to about a minute, which means you're getting this pretty much every battle. Um, if you don't have it, I mean, I recommend uh, relying on abilities like your new moon um, and that rotation and using your warrior of Luna ability to proc to uh, Lunar Strikes. Um, and like I said, the uh, Tangling Root is now giving you uh, 120,000 TPS. Um, the minute that they come out of it, or it breaks, or, or the duration ends. So no matter what, that damage is coming out. It's great. Um, and the last uh, spot on the tree, uh, Fury of Loon. Um, it's an AoE that does about 68,000 damage in a location, but what I find is it's pulling a tremendous amount of astral power from you. Um, I don't think that's something that you want to take a risk with. Um, and the AOE on it is um, it's small. It's a it's a small range. Um, once again, calls down a beam of pure energy at the target location, dealing yada yada damn it. It's like all right, so it came down at a target location. Now, what's the range? On yeah, it's a 35, 45 yard range to cast it, but what's the actual range on the damage? Come on, right? Really? Really? So, once again, we dropped the ball. We couldn't specify the spell properly. Um, increased Starfall's radius. Like I said, I'm seeing Starfall procs. Ticks for like 10k. When you're looking at a 1.5 million uh, health bar, I mean, like I said, you can stack all this stuff up the right way. All right, nature's balance. Aligns power of moon and star, causing lunar strike to extend the duration of moon fire, and solar rest to extend the duration of sun fire. So that means if you're in combat, you do have a long battle going on. Let's say you're going at a healer, and he's not dropping because a healer is healing that healer, and then another healer is healing the other healer behind him. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that this is how you want to go when you're dealing with long battles. Um, in the honor tree... Um, so, I found that the first two tiers of the Honor Tree are consistent on all classes. So you're looking at using your Gladiator's Medallion, which is your uh, Honor Medallion. Um, adaptation, um, 
allows it to proc on any CC that would be over 5 seconds, and then it only has a 60 second cooldown as opposed to a 2 minute cooldown if you use it over here. Um, that's great, but once again, you have no control over it. Um, and then Relentless increases, uh, I'm sorry, decreases the uh, crowd control by 25% on all crowd controls. Um, this is great, but once again, you have no control over what CCs you're coming out of and which ones you're not. Um, so I found that this medallion is, is great straight across the board in all classes. Um, I've kind of found the same thing out for uh, Tier 2, uh, Train of Thought. 15% ah! uh, increased damage beats uh, all. Um, being attacked will cancel this effect for 8 seconds, but then you're back in the game. 6% haste. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, if you're working on a specific rotation, you're trying to get burst out before you're seen, uh, haste could help you. Um, but increasing damage is increasing damage is increasing damage. Um, critical strike chance uh, on targets above 80%. Okay, we don't care about targets above 80%, right? We're trying to kill targets when they get down by 35%. That's where the striker comes in. That's where the extra 15% is going to be viable. Um, so Shade Mender, we discussed that with uh, Displacer Beast. I find that that extra 5% is great right there, and nothing else in this tree is viable for you. Uh, the Prickling Thorns is incredible. Um, like I said, it's, it's 120,000 DPS. The cast time on your tanker is, what, 1.6? So, no, it's a little, it's, it's longer. But, you know, you have dots rolling. You have other stuff going on. So I find that that's the way to go. Using Moonfire on a target already affected by Moonfire. Um, so we're spamming Moonfire. I mean, I've never liked that. Increases the damage of your Starfall by 30%. Here we go, talking about Starfall again. Uh, not really bad. Um, healing Touch generates Astro Power. We're not using Healing Touch because uh, we're healing other ways. Um, big heals like that, if, you, if you're stopping for Healing Touch, you've just killed your DPS so bad that you really shouldn't be in PvP. Okay? <laughs> Alright. Twin Moonfire. Um, great, because that means every time that you're Moonfire, you're hitting someone else with Moonfire. Um, I find that to be incredibly valuable. The other one that kind of caught my attention is uh, the Moon Kinora. Uh, whenever you star search, all allies within 40 yards have their spell critical strike increased by 15% for 12 seconds. So, with that said, if you were to go off to initiation, which increases your damage, well, your abilities increased by 30%. Uh, the critical strike chance increased by 30% uh, above 80% uh, health. So you'd come out in Moonkin over. you drop a star search by procking uh, astral communication right off the bat. So you're hidden. Now your crit chance is up 45% right there. Um, but that's going to tear off once these people get below 80%. And I feel that that's not where our focus is. You know, I. This ability, Moon Kinor, is an incredible raid ability. Um, because if you're using Star Search, which I find that I'm using Star Search all the time, um, this ability is great for RPGs. Uh, I think that in an RPG situation, you definitely want to be there. Um, because it's all about the team and what your team can do. And you're talking about spell critical strikes. Um, so that's he spell healing. Um, it's everything. So, um, spell critical strikes, especially if you have a mage on your team, like we can talk about that, you know, you can proc so many pyroglass, um, the mage's DPS right now is, is incredible. Um, but I think if you're rolling solo, um, and you want to guarantee yourself some nice damage, uh, Twin Moon Fire is the way to go. Um, down here in the bottom tree, Cyclone, we own the Cyclone. Reduces the cooldown of your solar beam by 30 seconds. That can be great. Great silence. I find that you're being chased down. Um, you have to think about the history of Boomkin here. I know my thought process is absolutely crazy, but um, so Boomkins were the class you were trying to chase down. You know what I mean? Because you knew they had the one out with a displacer piece to what matter. So you can get up on a Boomkin quick. With that said, I've always felt that Boomkins can survive uh, spell damage pretty well. Um, 
with the one summer solstice um, or a solar beam I'm sorry so I don't need summer solstice I don't um, and as far as the cyclone that's a great CC ability um, I think uh, with your war stomp and your solar beam um, you can silence a healer pretty well this way and again with entangling roots you can slow them for other people um, I felt that more survivability is where I needed to go here so swarms the target with fairies are uh, reducing their movement speed by 30% and their chance to hit by 50% by 8 seconds so it's on a 30 second cooldown 8 seconds of which you're now protected uh, which leaves you 22 seconds which I look at and it's displacer beast time mass entanglement time you know if anyone's coming up near you really want to get that uh, the fairy swarm on them right away. Um, other things to talk about uh, would be prestige. Um, prestige is, is cool because it's going to force people to come out of these honor talents which if you look at stuff like prickling thorns, twin wood lip, or fairies, even train of thought. I mean these abilities are going to hinder people tremendously. See you're going to have good players looking bad. I don't like that, <laughs> but uh, what do I know, right? What do I know? I mean, I know you want to create different prestige levels so that people can unlock new things, um, and you want to try to keep it more balanced. Um, you know, I was talking in my last video while well, I was bashing you guys about you know creating a PvP system that exists for all levels. If you create a PvP system that exists for all levels where we can all join together, then you have an experience and you have experience and you are allowing for the experienced people to get gratification as they beat up noobs. I mean, that's part of PvP. I mean, there has to be a learning curve. A 10-year veteran should feel good about what he can do out there on the field, not relearning his completely his complete class 12 years into uh, into a game but um so uh i hope you guys enjoyed my explanations i hope it makes sense to you guys i hope you try it out because i uh i see this as a very viable spot all right take care please subscribe thanks